2020 so far has been a weird one. We all know there's no need to elaborate further. As things slowly returned back to a state of normality, I wanted to explore some of the places of the beaten path without leaving the country in which I reside in, the United Kingdom. Internet, meet my friend, Payman. He's a friend from high school and a travel companion for this trip. Day one, we fuel up on coffee and cakes, and then we proceed to hike up Montfawon, which in Gaelic translates to cold round hill. A description for which I wholeheartedly agree with. The elevation of this hill is 2,293 feet. It dominates the surrounding area and can be seen far out to sea. From the top of Montfermont, on a clear day, you can also see both ends of the Loch Ness. Day 2. Of course, you can't go and visit the Loch Ness without actually swimming in it. This is a large, deep, freshwater loch in the Highlands, extending approximately 37 kilometers in length. The water temperature is a frigid 6 to 10 degrees Celsius all year round, so the best way is to warm up by a fire after you're done with your swim. Day 3. The Great Glen Way is a path. The entire thing can be walked in about 5 to 7 days. We however did the most hilly part of this path from a town called Invermorrison to our hostel in Drummondroch which is about 21 kilometers in length, capturing some of the most iconic views of Loch Ness. Day four, we picked up a car rental and decided to head and explore the Isle of Skye. A few facts about the Isle of Skye, it is the second largest island in Scotland after Lewis and Harris, and it is connected to the mainland by a bridge. On the Isle of Skye, we have also discovered the most amazing coffee in probably all of the UK as well. Now I'm going to butcher the name, but Cora and Dub, which translates to black sheep in Gaelic. Nice Point is the most westerly point of Skye, which also has a lighthouse which is over 100 years old stands 43 meters above sea level and can be seen up to 16 nautical miles offshore. Day 5. Finally, it was time to explore also the east coast of the Highlands. The Duncasby stacks are closer to the shores of Norway than to London and are the most northeastern point of the British mainland. 